Humpback Whale, Megaptera noviangelae. Humpback whales are baleen whales, which means they have a fringe-like plate of baleen rather than teeth. They are filter feeders. Baleen whales are also known as mysticetes. The humpback whale is in the group Rorquals, along with the blue whale and the fin whale. Other baleen whales include the grey whale, bowhead and right whale, and the pygmy right whale. So, baleen whales have baleen plates, two blowholes, a flat rostrum and dorsal fins two-thirds of the way back. Humpback whales are on average 14 to 18 metres long. They have long white pectoral fins with tubercles on the leading edge. They have a bumpy rostrum. They have a small bushy blow up to three metres high. They have a two-tiered dorsal fin located in the last third of the body. Their tail will fluke when doing a deep dive and each whale has a unique tail fin. So this is used by scientists for identification. So humpback whales have white pectoral fins up to five metres, a bumpy rostrum and marbling on the underside of their tail, which is unique and is used by scientists for identification of individual whales. So their behaviour includes fin slapping, breaching and fluking. They have a low rostrum and bumps, which are actually hair follicles left over from when they used to be a land animal. These are about fist size. They have huge pectoral fins, which are the largest in the animal kingdom. Tubercles, which are ridges on pectoral fins, allow them to be acrobatic. They breach to dislodge parasites such as barnacles that end up on their tail. They have a splash guard to try and prevent as much water from poss as possible going into their lungs via the blowhole. The tail has a lot of ridges and marbling on the underside. When jumping out of the water, they do a lot of fin and tail slapping. You can also get albino humpback, so if you do see a white whale when you're out white wa whale watching, do not automatically assume it's a beluga. Habitat. Humpback whales are found in all the major ocean basins. All but one of the subpopulations migrate between mating and calving grounds in tropical waters, usually near continental coastlines or island groups and productive colder water feeding areas in temperate and high latitudes. Whales generally stay in pods of two to three, female calf and escort, but can be seen in larger groups in breeding areas and when males congregate to compete for females, called a competition pod. Humpback whales are currently least concerned on the IUCN red list with increasing numbers, which is a very good sign. This has been helped by the International Ban on Commercial Whaling that was implemented in 1986. However, Norway, Iceland and Japan ignore this ban and still kill whales for commercial purposes. Reproduction. Females produce a single calf every two to three years on average. They have an 11 month gestation period and the calves measure 13 to 16 feet in length. Calves stay near their mother for up to one year before weaning. Threats. Getting tangled in fishing gear. This is fishing gear that has been discarded, known as ghost gear. It continues to kill after it has been discarded. Bycatch. This is when a species that is not the target species in fishing is caught accidentally. This can lead to death or serious issues that may later lead to death. Ingesting marine pollutants such as plastic. This can fill up the stomachs of whales and give them the feeling that they are full so they don't eat and starve to death. Toxic pollutants can also adhere to plastics. Ship strike. Whales being struck by vessels is one of the most prevalent threats facing cetaceans today. Anthropogenic noise, such as those from ships, underwater explosions or drilling, can cause displacement and disturbance all the way up to death and physical injury. Strandings, where a whale swims too close to shore and becomes beached and is unable to return to the sea. And commercial whaling, like we have already discussed, is still a threat. I have an interesting fact for you about humpback whales. It is believed, and yes, there have been scientific papers on this fact, that the Star Trek film, The Voyage Home, has actually helped to increase humpback whale populations. Let me know down in the comments if you've seen this film and how brilliant you think it is. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. It is absolutely brilliant. You've got Scotty, Kirk, McCoy, and of course, whales. Um... Yeah, so that was my video on humpback whales. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have, please let me know down in the comments. Remember to hit like, subscribe and comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more. Thank you.